In all of this, let's turn to Antonio Vitorino. He's the Director General for the UN's International Organization for Migration and joins me now live from Geneva. Mr Vitorino, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, and we continue, as you just saw in that piece, uh, to see really heartbreaking and desperate scenes as people flee what is clearly an escalating war. Give us a sense uh, of the magnitude in your eyes of what is unfolding here. This is the most dramatic humanitarian crisis in Europe since uh, World War II. And if there is no ceasefire right away, we will be plunged into a real humanitarian catastrophe. Your figures are right. More than 1.1 million have fled the country. This is above the figures of 2015 for the Syrian arrivals. This is well above the figures of the Balkan Wars in the 90s of last century. And I'm not counting, because we do not know exactly now, how many internally displaced people are inside Ukraine because of the conflict. So all in all, this is an humanitarian catastrophe. And of course, if there is no ceasefire, sir, how, what more can be done? What do you expect to see in the coming months, if not years, if this continues? Well, there is the, very, the urgent and the very urgent. Mm. The very urgent is to build on the humanitarian corridors that there has been a sign from the uh, Ukrainian-Russian conversations. But these humanitarian corridors need to be a two-way corridors. First, to allow people to leave the country, those who are willing to leave. But secondly, these humanitarian corridors need to guarantee safety for the transportation of the goods that are absolutely indispensable to assist the thousands of internally displaced Ukrainians particularly in hospitals. We are very concerned that the hospitals in Ukraine are being hit by the war. There is no oxygen. There is scarcity of blood, equipments and medicines. So humanitarian corridors is right now and we need to jump immediately there. And the urgent, of course, as you mentioned also before, it's to guarantee the protection of those who leave the country and who are uh, in the neighboring countries who have generously accepted their entrance, more than 1.1 million people. Let's talk about those leaving the country, sir. Unfortunately, um, our teams on the ground, I've heard some very disturbing stories of, I think it's fair to say, of discrimination, of xenophobia against non-Europeans. Have a listen to this. Yes. Our parents are home waiting for us all the time. It comes into my mind. I feel like crying. Ukraine is a, it's a beautiful country, but they don't have to treat us like this. They don't have to treat us like this. Uh, why is this happening? Yes, we, unfortunately, this is happening. Uh, there are different reasons. But of course, we have already approached the authorities, both in Ukraine and in the neighboring countries, to make sure that everybody who is fleeing the country, irrespective of their nationality, of their territory of origin, of the color of their skin, are allowed to cross. And uh, when they come to the countries, the neighboring countries, IOM is there to support them. And for those who want to return to their countries or, or of origin, to facilitate their return. But there is no excuse for any kind of discrimination according to the nationality. All are human beings. All need to be treated on equal foot. All are fleeing from war. But you acknowledge, sir, that this is happening? Yes, absolutely. We have reports, credible uh, reports, verified uh, reports, and we are acting with the authorities because both, on both sides, in spite of the war, there is a responsibility of the authorities to guarantee the safety and the security of all human beings. And the missiles do not uh, discriminate according to the nationality. They eat equally everybody. Mr. Vitorino, let me ask you uh, about the EU and its decision, as we mentioned, to step up uh, to approve a plan to grant uh, really uh, temporary residence to Ukrainians. How urgent, how important is this right now? 
I praise very much the decision of the European Union. I must confess that this directive, the Temporary Protection Directive, was my proposal when I was 20 years mm -hmm. ago uh, Commissioner for Justice and Home Affairs. So I know very well what we are talking about. It was precisely for these kind of situations that the directive was drafted, is to provide immediate protection and assistance, irrespective of the nationality, for those who are fleeing conflicts and come to rescue in to search rescue here in the European Union member states. So I praise very much this decision. Now it's necessary to guarantee the necessary support from the international community to provide the assistance to those who can benefit for temporary protection. Antonio Vitorino, please stay in touch with us. Let us know how your team on the ground is doing uh, and really what they're facing. Appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Thank you. Obrigado. Mm -hmm.